Hello guys, today I am going to continue the tutorial from previous video, which is the 15 part again. If you haven't watched the video before, feel free to check out at the link below. So, for today, I'm going to show you two stuff. The first thing is how we add the animation when we try to move the block. The second stuff is how we generate a random position for all of these number box. So, let's go let's try to add the animation to a block first so go to your number box script so we will try to enhance the update position method by creating a new coroutine called move for the moves we need two variables the first thing is the elapsed time so we need a total time pass for the frame the second variable will be the duration this depends how fast you want the block to be moved so now two more variables which is start position uh, start position will this take the game object dot transform the local position and the other will be the end which is a new vector to the x and y so now we are doing a while loop here while elapsed time less than duration then we will use the set the local position <coughs> we will use a loop function to have a smooth curve I mean smooth, smooth value when we try to move the position we we'll use the elapsed time by divide by duration then we just add the elapsed time by current the duration of this frame time dot delta time so inside a while loop we need to return now for each frame and lastly we will set the position to the end vector cool then we will just replace this line with start for routine move routine so save and let's have a try see as you can see you can have a nice smooth animation right now so if you want to move it faster you can just reduce or increase the speed 0.1 will allow the block to be moved faster yep so this is how we add the animation to the box number box sliding movement so <coughs> now i'm going to show you how to how we generate a random board position so go to your parser script what we need to do we will need to add a new method called shuffle this will shuffle this will during the initial we will shuffle the board so for this shuffle, we will need to create a, We will try to look through all the number box and try to get some value move and randomly move the box around. So we will reuse the swap method. So in order to reuse the swap method, I need to replace here when I create a new swap method, we are calling this swap. Then this will take the x, the y. Then we will just move this, cut this, paste it in the above. Then we will call just call the swap x and y, the x and the y. Cool. Because the random movement of the dx will be different from where we want the click movement. So now we can reuse the swap method for the random position generator. So the first, first thing we need to have a, we need to look through all the boxes, number boxes. So I plus plus R so this should be I. Then we will use a this will be a J. So we will check if boxes
is empty. So now we try to look for the. Mm, if it's empty, we are try to swap the position. So to sort the position, we need to call the swap method. Now we need to x and y. The x and y will be the the current boxer position, which is i and j. Now we need to look for the how we get the dx and dy. I mean the target position we to sort the box. So now we need to create a new method to find the. We are using a vector tool. Because to return to x and y, we are call this method get, um, get where we move. Where we move. Yeah, get where we move will do. So we will take the current x and y. <coughs> so now we will check vector 2. We create an empty vector 2 position first. Okay, we will create a new. The uh, vector two position, which is the result to return. So now, how we determine which where to move the boxes after we found an empty boxes? So we just do a random generator. The range we have four direction right, top down, left right. So then we just do a check if n equal to zero. Then we will set the vector two dot left. Then else, if n equal to one, then just mm, let me play this. Uh, let me quickly uh, play this as well. So zero, one, two, three. Then this will be set to right up. This is not needed anyway. Because this is the last value we have. So okay now. Definitely, <coughs> definitely there must be some invalid move, which is we need to check. So we will do a do out loop here to keep the random to keep randomly loop the position if we get an, an invalid move. So now how we check for a valid and invalid move? We need another method called is valid range. This will check whether the box has moved out of the boundary as we have the size of four on it. So this will return n must be greater than zero and n must be less than or equal to three. So this will make sure <coughs> the Target will always inside. Mm. Definitely, we will check its very range. The x position plus position dot x and its value range y plus post dot y. This is a what do while loop, so we need to do a while here. So what is the error hole here? Can I convert to float to integer? Okay, um, I think this is a float. Just cast this to integer will do. So if both of these value, we definitely don't want to keep going. If only if both of these is is valid, so. And also, um, why there is an error over here? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, now we have a better. We will make sure our random target position will always valid. To to have a better decision by the random generator, we will create call is repeat move. What is mean by repeat move means if the if the boxer move to the right, then you move the boxer to back to the left again, which is which we don't want that to be happen. So we will return, we will check the current position. Revoke, I mean, we go to last move. We will store the last move somewhere. Uh. 
I got a new vector too. No, don't So after we set it, we are always check the last move before return it. So we'll make sure the last move. We'll store the last move in this script in the parser file. Then always keep tracking of the last move, and we make sure we don't do a counter move against the last move. So now we will check and make sure it's not it's not repeat move. Mm. <coughs> it's not already. I mean. Or it's a repeat move, then we will regenerate again. So now we have everything ready, then we can call the tool pause equal to get value move. And J. Then now we have the dx and dy already. Post dot x and post dot y. Ah. Need to cast for individuals. Cool. Now let us try. Mm, nothing happened because like, we haven't called the method after the initialize. Try again. Cool. As you can see, one box is confirmed. Now what we need to do is do a loop in our shuffle. So we just need to call inside a shuffle will be better. But let's no, do it outside. So depend how many times you want to shuffle the box. So let's say I shuffle for 999 times. As you can see, this this is how we get a random initial board for our 15 parser game. I think that's it for this tutorial. I hope this tutorial helped you. If it did, please give this tutorial a like and also subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Thank you.